There used to be a meme that every day was arm day, but every day is leg day. Let's put an end to it right here and right now, forever. This bullshit, what are the memes where people like, I did leg day, like you're training incorrectly. If that's how you lead leg day and you think leg day is so hard, you're training incorrectly. And today we're gonna talk about leg day. Can we talk about that hair first? Nah, dude. Huh? Look at this, this is what I found. That's me, suckers, I'm a Slytherin. I'm on that Slytherin, dude. What do you know about parcel tongue, bitch? Leg day. I feel like on every video. It's all I got. We always get your quads. It's all I got. All these other kids be working out with their shirts off. That's why I wear short shorts. It's my only quality and personality. But you can't flex the personality. That's why we flex the quads. There was a question about the leg day thing, and that's what pissed me off. If you think thrashing any body part, especially the bigger the body part, the muscle, and the more weight you move with that body part, which would cause systemic fatigue, the slower your progress will be because the amount of volume I can do in three to five leg days will be greater over weeks, months, years than yours thrashing once a week. And the repair and the, the stimulus in my general fitness, my general strength is gonna go way the fuck up. And that's something that bodybuilders, at least that are in the know, do now. Back in the day, Power lifters are the ones with higher frequency, right? Because we need to practice the lift. I guess, I guess it started because of body, uh, people talking shit or going off about uh, splits. On, on, Insta, on TikTok, all they talk about is split. And I'm like, dude, your split doesn't matter. Like, that's like saying like, okay, I have to, I gotta go to the grocery store, I gotta do my laundry, and I, and I gotta go take my car to the mechanic. In what order I fucking do those things don't matter. That's just how you organize your day. And so how I train, is just how I organize my workout and my week. Not that it doesn't matter, but it's not gonna, that organization doesn't make or break your gains and doesn't determine whether you're building muscle, losing fat, or building strength. But people talk about split like priority one, but that's like priority like 12. I'll figure out how much, what my goal is, what kind of work and how much work I gotta do to get there, and then what exercises fit that, what intensities, volume that my body can handle depending on that goal. And then I kind of organize it so it makes some sense in the week. If I'm doing three squat days a week, I'm probably not gonna do them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But it ain't rocket science. I'll probably do them, oh, three days a week, I'll do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That makes some kind of fucking sense, and we'll do that. Tatum? What the hell does that mean? Channing Tatum known for chains? No. <laughs> no, he's not. What the fuck lyric is that? That's hot. That's hot bars, man. Hot fire coming at your ass. Call me Titty Boy, got too many chains, you know? We're just lifting weights. Don't We're just fucking lifting weights, you dorks. <laughs> and I'm a dork. Like, I, I want to do things. I understand. You're getting into something, you spend a lot of time, you spend a lot of energy, and you have your goal physique, or your goal deadlift, or whatever, you really want to hit it. So you're trying to look at every little stone to make sure that you're doing something in the right direction. But the issue is, is they're uh, majoring in the minors. You're focusing on the things that don't matter. What matters is the consistency. What matters more is about your program actually having progression, more weight, more volume, more reps, more something, and not switching up your exercises all the time. And also just not obliterating your body to infinity and then eating Chipotle all day, praying it's gonna look better. Can we tell them where we're going in a couple, in like a week? We will be uh, at the Barber Brigade meet, at least for half the day. Sunday 31st, 30th? Yeah, 30th. 30th. The oh, thir yeah, Sunday 31st. 31st. 31st, the Barber Brigade competition. We'll be kicking it, probably vlogging a bit. Um, we're heading to LA to, to kid, just kick it. We're gonna hang out with Bart. We're gonna tour Barber Brigade. We're gonna let the young guns Seabass and Kyle, the GM at 3rd Street, kind of mingle and meet some of the crew. And I want them to uh, not only have fun, look at the gym, but kind of see kind of the back end of, of, of how some gyms are run. I've been lucky enough that I, ran, I helped run a commercial gym. You guys know I was a super training. and run a bunch of that forever. Um, and then I've been a part of our brigade family, extended family, redheaded stepchild for eight years. They've been around almost 10 years, I think. I've been there about eight. So I've seen so many different businesses and gyms. Um, but Seabass young, man. Young cat behind the camera, 21. Uh, Kyle's not as young, but Kyle played professional baseball, for those that don't know. The guy with the hat who's always in the vlogs with me, he was drafted to, he put, he, I don't know if he liked me bragging about him, but he was drafted to the Texas Rangers straight out of high school, dude threw heaters as a pitcher. Um, so he played, he did the professional baseball life. 
um, he never really got to uh, work this world either. And then he's, he was into bodybuilding and lifting. His dad played college football, so he's just always in the weight room. And that's when I met him. His old, his cousin was my old training partner. Uh, for those that have been around for a long, long time, Bryce, um, he, he only had one leg. You guys, that rings a bell. Uh, he was my training partner. I coached him at Super Training, and they're cousins. So we started playing video games, and then me and Kyle became close, became homies, and then now he runs Third Street. Um, He's been in the fitness industry and the supplement game and, and, and lifting weights for a while, but uh, not like this style of operation. So we'll be in LA, the 31st, Barber Brigade. Maybe we'll see you there. Down the block. Yeah, yeah. How's the weight looking? You still got the same or what? Yeah, 199s. 199. So uh, average is probably low 199s. Today was like 199.6. Yeah, we're jamming. Cardio's been kind of low, energy's been kind of low, so my cardio hasn't been crazy. And then just like stress has been high, life stress, business stress, so it's a lot of moving parts, so I just haven't been able to hit the cardio I want. Considering that last week's average, yeah, the week before that was probably 201, 202. And this last week's average is 199, so we're still heading the right direction. Probably gonna go about three more weeks of cut, and then uh, probably up to the expo, probably up to August 13th, and then I'm gonna find maintenance, and, and we'll kind of reverse that into a little maintenance phase, at least six to eight weeks. You know, let my body feel a little better, hormones a little better, and chances are, not only if I reverse diet correctly, but my energy will come back, so I'll be able to do more cardio. So we might have a hair recomp in there too. The scale, the scale won't be as telling, you know? Glycogen's gonna be a little more full, energy will be up, I'll be able to move more, so we'll see. We'll see where we, we, we kind of settle. Losing weight slowly is better than losing fat? Yeah, that's a good question. I was talking about that with a couple people. There's a lot of different methodologies and, and things people do to lose weight. I think it really depends on the goals in the individual. Um, if you have a lot of weight to lose and you're a strength athlete or you're trying to drop classes, sometimes it's better to get it over with. Um, if you eat enough, uh, enough protein, and your training stimulus is even semi-similar to what you were doing before, you're not gonna lose a ton of muscle. When you lose strength, it's because you have less calories in your system and you have less uh, energy to train, therefore, and also your leverages. If you got a big old belly, even a little belly, it feels a lot better to bench and squat off that thing. So you're gonna lose that belly and your energy's low, your strength it will go down in the gym. Um, so sometimes it's better to cut quickly kind of break through and you will get weaker, you'll feel weaker just to get to maintenance sooner and get to your new goal weight sooner so then you can rebuild that strength to get used to your new leverages. You know, the belt's gonna fit different, your rebound's gonna feel different. Um, if it's general lifestyle, you know, and you just wanna get healthier, sometimes it's maybe better to do it slower because uh, then you can get into the habit of eating more whole foods, et cetera, et cetera, and, and, and slowly get your way down, um, breaking the habit of just eating out all the time or whatever and getting used to tracking. So it kind of depends on the goals. And there's definitely time to do a longer cut in bodybuilding too. Um, kind of depends, kind of depends. But yeah, like I did a pretty slow one from 250 to about 215. And then I took a hair of a break and then I went 215 to you know 199 pretty quick. What would you say your split is? Well, obviously you're squatting every day. So you're squatting every day and then I'm just doing a basic push pull. So okay. back, back, biceps on one day, next day chest, shoulders, tries. Okay. Keep it simple. simple. Easy. Easy, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, new video, Tuesday, Thursday. We'll see you in LA, uh, the 31st, 3SB.co. We over me, be a part of something bigger than yourself. Sound like I'm out.